Now, the annual Brand Africa 100, Africa's best brand survey for 2016-2017, has seen a rise for Samsung, a drop for MTN and non-African brands entrenching their positions in the African market. To discuss this uh, brand new survey for us is the founder and chairman of the brand leadership group, Tebi Ikalafeng. Welcome back to the program. Not climbing mountains in the next couple of weeks? Because that's um, what you've been doing. Not, not yeah. in the next couple of weeks, but certainly in the next couple of yeah. months I need to be climbing mountains. But this is also an important mountain to climb, mm. the mountain of brands in Africa. What a clever segue, sir. That was really good. <laughs> Samsung rising to the most admired brand in Africa. What is Samsung doing? You know what Samsung is doing right is they are in all the 55 countries and when I had coffee with the previous Africa CEO and recently with the, with the current uh, uh, leadership they said to me what we do right is we know every single market and he was explaining to me the previous CEO that he had spent time in most homes mm. in the entire continent and he said you know when we look at the lights going down we don't look at Africa as backwards we look at an opportunity to create products that respond to that condition so some people will say oh there's energy issues in, in Africa and he says no 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 there's energy opportunities because the sun is always up mm. uh, so that's how they came up with the build for Africa but the second thing that they're actually doing right is not just presence is um, they're actually present in many categories so many of us when we talk about uh, Samsung you know we look at the issues last year with Galaxy Note 7. Mm. It was limited to mobile, but not only that, they never ever launched Galaxy Note 7 in Africa, so the problem really never touched them. Where they are doing things right is they do fridges, mm. they do vacuum cleaners, they do air conditioners, so they are present in multiple mm. categories. So when a, when a consumer in Africa talks about Samsung, they talk about Samsung really present in many, in, in many areas where they need, uh, where, where they operate in the country. Now we know that the South African brand MTN has had difficulties in the past couple of years. It's dropped dropped from top spot to nine overall, but retains top rank as the most admired African brand. It's going to take little comfort from that. Though. I think they should take comfort in that uh, while they have dropped so much, uh, they are still the standard by which building a great African brand is about. I mean, they're present in over 20 countries. Uh, they really are, they really have connected the rest of the continent. And they have suffered, you know, their uh, demise has demonstrated that a brand is really in the minds of consumers. But why is it dropped eight places? There, there has been a lot of challenges in the last couple, mm -hmm. couple of years, as you uh, alluded to, the issues in Nigeria with the fines. And that's created a lot of uh, negative talk mm -hmm. in the market. Uh, so not necessarily that the brand itself or the product is negative, but just a lot of negative talk in the market. Okay. back to that important thing about consumer trust in brands Correct. possibly some of that trust has been some eroded. of the red has been eroded and because remember it wasn't just that mm. then there was also the issues about changing leadership in, in, in uh, for, uh, for the group but there's also issues about repatriation of profits in Nigeria so there were just too many negative news which are dominating the marketplace rather than the positive news of a great African brand which is the only brand by the way which used to feature in the world's uh, top one our uh, top uh, top 500 brands are African brands working hard enough though because the survey also points out as I mentioned non-African brands are the top three brands in all markets except Nigeria uh, Kenya and, and in Tanzania. I don't think African brands are working mm. as hard as, as they should. I don't think African entrepreneurs are realizing the opportunity that is in front of them. To, for African brands to only re, uh, represent 16% of the top 100 is a problem, it's a challenge, it's an opportunity for entrepreneurs. Uh, the challenge that African, not just, not just con entrepreneurs, but also governments have got, is they have to create an enabling environment. We cannot have a continent that is characterized by aid or that is characterized by, by, by help from mm. outside, uh, outside entities. The Africans are very smart Africans are very creative what they now need they need a third which is the most important thing they need Africans to believe in Africa because you know when Africans look at made in Africa brands they tend to look down on the products they tend to look down on the services they said Af made in Africa is not as desirable as a made elsewhere but made in Africa is about the only distinction that we have worldwide some of the brands Nigeria glow Kenya with the Safari common and Peza and the Tusker Tanzania with Azam uh, all featuring prominently in the survey what are those brands doing to entrench that position in, in, the, in, in the top echelon? I think it's a combination of yeah. two things. The one thing is, those countries you've, men, you've, you've mentioned, Nigeria's got a very strong self of, self, self sense of identity. You know, when you go to Nigeria, they collectively see themselves as Nigerians uh, with a strong national identity. Mm. The second thing that I think they're doing very well is they're very, very entrepreneurial markets. They are creating 
constantly creating products, constantly looking at ways to create products which solve their own problems and, and, and challenges. The two international brands um, that have made drops and gains, Lacoste, which is an old French clothing brand, I think it's the Little Crocodile. So it's a Little Crocodile, little crocodile. Of, 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 by, um, my tennis player from France. That's made the most gain, and yet a, a global American brand, Levi's, has dropped in popularity. Do you have any thoughts? Lacoste has got new management. Yeah. So for the last couple of years, they've got new management. They made two billion, uh, two billion uh, uh, euro or, or, or dollars. They got my numbers confused. A lot of money, mm. <laughs> basically. So, uh, so the new manager, the new CEO, has come back. He's revitalized the brand, and most importantly, he's consolidated the brand and focused it on its core. Because you know what tends to happen is a lot of our, our, our people uh, get a hold of your brands and they want to spread it out, out mm. widely. Consolidate the brand, put in the right management, put in the right brand management, and is investing so in the brand. So all about leadership. What so about, all about leadership. Leadership. Levi's? Uh, Levi's is exactly all about leadership as mm. well. They have lost leadership. They're not as cool as they used to be. And as a, as, as a result, they have struggled to uh, to gain traction. They've struggled also um, against many other brands. Because remember now, mm. they've got the G-Stars to compete with. But not only else they've got the G-Stars and many other uh, fashion brands to compete with, but also have to compete with all our, our, our apparel. Tebia Kalafeng, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jay.